Hello students. Welcome to EduFarm. Believe and become. Classes for GPAT and NIPER JWE. If you like to share our videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update. Hello students. Here we have a compilation of all the test yourself questions only for your convenience. Each set of 100 questions from test yourself is only for 100 rupees all in a pdf format we have got you an offer of two question set just for 180 rupees to avail this offer you just need to contact us through the mail and the mail address is eduform1994 at the rate gmail.com contact now to avail this offer hello students welcome to another lecture by eduform today's topic is on pre-formulation which is an essential topic for the semester as well as for any pharma competitive exams. This is a topic from the pharmaceutics part. Now let's begin. Prior to the development of any dosage forms, it is essential that certain fundamental physical and chemical properties of the drug molecule and other derived properties are determined. This information dictates many of the subsequent events and approaches in formulation development. This first learning phase is known as preformulation. Preformulation is a link between drug discovery and drug development. It is the fundamental step in the rational development of a dosage form. Now preformulation drug characterization can be done by the following methods or functions or characterizations. The tests are like spectroscopy test which is done by simple UV assay methods. Solubility, in solubility we have aqueous solubility, partition coefficient, pKa, solvents, dissolutions, which are measured by phase solubility, purity, intrinsic solubility, pH effects, hygroscopicity, stability, extraction, lipophilicity, etc. Then comes melting point, which is characterized by DSC, polymorphism, hydrates, solvates, then assay development which is done by UV, TLC or HPLC. Further, stability in solution and in solid state can be determined by thermal hydrolysis, oxidation photolysis, metal ions and by determining the pH. In powder flow properties, we have bulk density and angle of repose which are essential for tablet and capsule formulation. Then we have compression properties and excipient compatibility. And further, but last but not the least, we have microscopy. Now, what are the goals of preformulation? To formulate an elegant, safe, efficacious dosage form with good bioavailability is the fundamental goal. Then to perform or to formulate new dosage form of an already existing drug. Determination of all the properties of drug and the best suitable dosage form for the drug molecule. So these three points are the main goals of preformulation studies. Now comes spectroscopy. Most drugs absorb light in the ultraviolet wavelengths which is from 190 to 390 nanometer as they are generally aromatic and contain double bonds. Using, using the UV spectrum of the drug, it is possible to choose an analytical wavelength often lambda max suitable to quantify the amount of drug in a particular solution. Where absorbance equal to A is equal to log to the base 10 I0 divided by i is equal to ECL where intensity of the incident light is considered I0, intensity of the transmitted light is considered I, concentration C, path length of the solution is L and molar extinction coefficient is E. Now comes solubility. In solubility we have aqueous solubility. A drug must possess aqueous solubility for therapeutic efficacy in physiological pH range of 1 to 8 at 37 degree centigrade. 
poor solubility or less than 10 mg per ml may result into bioabsorption problems. If solubility of drug is less than 1 mg per ml, it indicates the need for a salt, particularly if the drug will be formulated as a tablet or capsule. In the range of 1 to 10 mg per ml, serious consideration should be given to salt formation. Now there are two fundamental properties that are mandatory for a new compound. These are intrinsic solubility and dissociation constant. Now what is intrinsic solubility? Intrinsic solubility is the equilibrium solubility of the free acid or free base form of an insoluble compound at a pH where it is fully unionized. The solubility of weakly acidic and weakly basic drug as a function of pH can be predicted with the help of equations S equal to S0 in bracket 1 plus K1 divided by concentration of hydrogen ions which is for weak acids and for base or weak base it is S equal to S0 in bracket 1 plus concentration of hydrogen ions divided by K2 where S equal to solubility at a given pH, S0 is the intrinsic solubility of the neutral form, K1 is the dissociation constant of weak acid and K2 is the dissociation constant for weak base. The intrinsic solubility should ideally be measured at two temperatures. One is 4 degree centigrade to ensure the physical stability and extend short term storage and chemical stability until more definitive data are available. And the another one is 37 degree centigrade which is to support the biopharmaceutical evaluation. Now the method to determine solubility. Number one is equilibrium solubility method where an excess or excess of drug is placed in a solvent and shaken at a constant temperature over a prolonged period of time, for example for 24 to 72 hours, till equilibrium is attained. Finally, when it is attained, filtration is done and the supernatant is analyzed via HPLC to determine the degree of solubility. Second method is turbidometric solubility method. Third one is nephlometric solubility method. Then comes ultrafiltration or LCMS solubility method and then finally direct solubility method. Now what is dissociation constant or ionization constant which is also known as pKa. 75% of all drugs are weak bases, 20% are weak acids and only 5% are non ionic amphoteric or alcohols. It is therefore appropriate to consider the henderson hasselbach equation for weak bases and acids. For weak bases, the equation is pH equal to pKa plus log concentration of unionized form divided by concentration of ionized form. And for weak acids, it's pH equal to pKa plus log concentration of ionized by concentration of unionized form. These equations are helpful to determine the pKa of a drug. Predict solubility at any pH provided that the CO and PK are known. Facilitate the selection of suitable salt forming compounds and finally predict the solubility and pH properties of the salts. But there is only one limitation that if the pH fails outside the limits of 4 to 10 or when the solution is very dilute, we cannot use this equation. To fail outside the now the methods of determination of pKa which are potentiometric method, conductivity method, dissolution rate method, liquid-liquid partition method and spectrophotometric method. Now what is solubilization? Many different approaches have been developed to improve drug solubility. One is micronization. For example, Griseofalvin shows increased solubility by reducing particle size. Second one is change in pH. Example solubility of nimesulite increases as pH is increased. 
The second example is etoposite formulation is difficult because of its poor solubility and labile chemical stability. So its most stable formulation is etoposite loaded emulsion or ELE at pH 4 to 5. The third one is co-solvency. Addition of water miscible solvents can often improve the solubility of a weak electrolyte or non-polar compound in water by altering the polarity of the solvent. The choice of suitable co-solvent is limited for pharmaceutical use because of possible toxicity and irritancy. Ideally, suitable blends should possess values of dry electric constant between 25 to 80. Commonly used co-solvents are ethanol, sorbitol, glycerin, propylene glycol, dimethyl acetamide, DMA and DMSO, etc. Now the fourth one is solubilization by surfactant. For example, gelusire 44 by 14 is a surface active excipient that can solubilize poorly soluble drugs. The next example is that anionic and cationic surfactants exhibit dramatically higher soluble solubilization for glycoside while non-ionic surfactants showed significantly lower solubilizing ability. The fifth one is complexation. The complexation of iodine with 10 to 15 percent polyvinyl or pyrolidone or PVP can improve aqueous solubility of active agent. The sixth one is formation of inclusion compound. The aqueous solubility and chemical stability of quercetin can be improved via complexation with beta cyclodextrin. Chemical modification. Many poorly soluble drugs are modified into salt form, which is water soluble. Now use of metastable polymorphs. For example, B form of chloramphenicol palmitate is more water soluble than A and C forms. Now what are salts? Salts are prepared from strong acids or bases, are freely soluble but very hygroscopic. It is often better to use a weaker acid or a base to form a salt provided any solubility requirements are met. A less soluble salt will generally be less hygroscopic and form less acidic or basic solutions. Injection should ideally lie in the pH range of 3 to 9 to prevent the vessel or tissue damage and pain at the injection site. Oral syrups should not be too acidic to enhance palatability. A weak base with an intrinsic solubility greater than 1 mg per ml will be freely soluble in the gastrointestinal tract, especially in the stomach. A weak base will have a high dissolution rate in the stomach but as it moves down the gastrointestinal tract the pH rises and the dissolution rate falls whereas a weak acid has minimum dissolution in the stomach but becomes more soluble and dissolution rate increases down the gut and also absorption falls because the drug is ionized. In the intestine the salt does not depress the pH unlike the acid which is neutralized and the diffusion layer pH is again raised to promote dissolution. Now what are solvents? Water miscible solvents are used in pre-formulation studies in formulations to improve solubility or stability and in analysis to facilitate extraction and separation for example in chromatography. Oils are used in emulsions, topicals, such as creams and ointments, intramuscular injections and liquid filled oral preparations such as soft and hard gelatin capsules. When aqueous pH and solvent solubility and stability are unattainable, then oils are used. Now, aqueous methanol is also widely used in HPLC and is the standard solvent in sample extraction during the analysis and stability testing. The most acceptable non-aqueous solvents pharmaceutically are glycerol, propylene glycol, and ethanol. Now, what is partition coefficient? A measurement of drug lipophilicity and indication of its ability to cross cell membrane is oil by water partition coefficient. 
in systems such as octanol or water and chloroform by water. It is defined as the ratio of the unionized drug distributed between the organic and aqueous phases at equilibrium. P O by W is equal to concentration in oil by concentration in water at equilibrium. When a solute is added to two immiscible liquids, it will distribute itself between the two phases in a fixed ratio, which is referred to as the partition or distribution coefficient. It is independent of concentration of dilute solution of given solute species. Various organic solvents such as used in determination of partition coefficient include chloroform, ether, amyl acetate, etc. The solubility parameters of n octanol, that is delta 10.24, lies midway in the range of major drugs, that is from 8 to 12. Thus, in formulation development, the n octanol water partition coefficient is commonly used. That's all for today. Check more of our videos and let us know of any query in the comment section below. Also, you can suggest topics for our next video. You can also support us. Check the description for details. Your support will encourage us to make more such videos. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in our next lecture. Till then, keep your preparations on with EduFarm.